it is a cold May morning and today I'm filming my June favorites. I'm basically doing a little mini morning routine for you, taking you through all the favorite things that I do in the morning because that is my favorite time of the day. <laughs> the sun is starting to stream in to my apartment. I'm very excited. I love when it's a nice clear sunny day. Just made myself a cup of coffee. Favorite number one. Alrighty, so first thing that I tend to do each morning after I have made my coffee is sit on the couch and read for a bit. It's been a really nice habit that I've been getting into just to start my day with like 20 minutes of reading. I just, I'm obsessed with the books that I've been reading lately. So I'm just kind of like trying to find any time in my day that I can to stick in some reading. I'm currently reading Atomic Habits by James Clear, but I'm not finished that book. Um, and two of the other books that I actually finished this month, I kind of need to talk about them in a future video, like a month away. So <laughs> you'll soon understand why, so stay tuned. But I'm also partway through Homo Deus, which is the sequel to Sapiens. I read it earlier in the year, which is basically, that was a brief history of humankind. So it was all about like human history. Um, absolutely amazing book read that a few months ago it was it's really big like it takes a good like at least 12 hours if not 15 to get through it's very dense <laughs> but then homo deus is called a brief history of tomorrow and it's essentially based on the trends of human history how we're going to continue to evolve and what things are going to be like for us in the next sort of 50 plus years it's scary it's challenging read because it really just makes you feel like whoa <laughs> like mind-blowing like that mind-blowing emoji that's how I feel reading this book the entire time I'm about 73% of the way through so I'm nearly done especially because there'll be a ton of references at the back taking up a good chunk of that but if you want a mind-blowing read something that just makes you really think question things just it's intense then definitely read I would start with Sapiens and then read Homo Deus because I feel like they really do complement each other well. An underlying theme of the whole book is just to get us to recognise that we are essentially just organic algorithms and that all our thoughts and choices that we feel as free will as a human actually come down to just an algorithm based on if this, then that. <laughs> I don't know, it's really intense, like it's a it's a big read. It was both challenging, but also in a way relieving, because it made me realize that like, a lot of the like negative thought patterns that we might get into, or other kinds of like, unhelpful habits, things we want to change, but we're like, why can I not stop eating cookies or something? Like, it's, it's not because, it's not because you have bad control necessary or bad free will, it's that like, it's literally an algorithm in your body, um, and there are certain things that like trigger your actions like we're so essentially not as free as we think it, it turns liberalism essentially right on its head it makes you question everything you know about life highly recommend very thought-provoking uh, yeah well all right the boy is awake and I'm gonna have another cup of coffee make breakfast because I want to show you guys what we've been having for breakfast it's so good. yeah it's so good and um, we've kind of like gotten into a little like daily routine of having avocado toast which I know is nothing groundbreaking but there's a few extra ingredients that go in and the way you prepare the toast makes a huge difference to how delicious it is so I'm so excited okay so for this you're gonna need obviously an avocado and some bread to toast garlic infused oil and if you don't have this then just normal olive oil or some sort of cooking oil and some garlic that you can like infuse it in the pan feta cheese salt and pepper some chili flakes some parsley we have the tiniest limp bit left but it'll be fine a quarter of a lime and we are just using these ones that we've already got cut and some dukkha if you have it this is a really nice garnish for it <laughs> basically it is just smashed avocado on toast um, and you just pretty much put all the ingredients apart from oil and bread obviously in a bowl and just mush it together that's all you do leave the parsley and the dukkha though to sprinkle on top but instead of just toasting the bread like in a toaster fry it in a pan in the oil it's amazing it suddenly becomes like cafe toast and it's so good this oil that we have it's extra virgin garlic oil so you can't have your pan too hot because otherwise you'll burn the oil so just have it quite like moderately low and we'll just like let that heat up for a while and while we're doing that we're going to make the smash She beauty! Okay, 
oil is starting to get nice and hot so I'm going to put the bread in, sort of mush it around into the oil as well so it gets all coated. Alright, so I've smashed up the avo. Now it's time to smash in some feta cheese. Do you get that parcel? So I just squeeze the juice in of one quarter of a lime plus some salt and pepper. And some chili flakes. sad parsley garnish. yeah but it's real wilty it's and there's not a lot of it <laughs> yours can look prettier than mine and then the main star of the show the dukkah oh, oh that's a lot a beautiful meal for a beautiful man <laughs> slow-mo food shots mm. Bum, chicken, wow wow <laughs> <laughs> taste test Mm. Yeah, because not only is this breakfast so delicious, but it's also really sustaining. So I don't really get hungry like mid-morning hanger or anything. So it's good. Alrighty, so moving on to skincare. About 45 minutes until Alex needs to make noise upstairs. So <laughs> can we get it done? Beautiful. So I've just washed my face using the CeraVe hydrating cleanser. And then I toned with my Soonjung pH 5.5 relief toner and then exfoliated with the Paula's Choice 2% BHA. They're like kind of standard products. I've talked about them heaps in the past. Absolutely love them. There's a couple of new things I kind of wanted to chat to you guys about that I've been trying and really enjoying. One of them is the Purito Centella Unscented Serum. So this is like the serum friend to one of my favorite sunscreens, the Purito Unscented Sun. It contains humectants, it's got niacinamide, it's got ceramides, peptides, like it's really jam-packed with a lot of great things that help to protect your skin barrier. So I love it in the morning. But what I've been doing is mixing a pump of this with a little bit of this. This is the Ordinary 100% Ascorbic Acid Powder, which is basically just vitamin C powder that you can mix in with your existing serums to make your own vitamin C serum. I've tried pretty much every single vitamin C product that The Ordinary makes. I'm not a huge, huge fan of their other like already mixed up formulas because I find the textures of them a little bit difficult even though I think they work well like they, they are effective and you definitely feel it on your skin but the actual formulations that they have to store the active ingredients in is just not quite right for my skin because you can't have a water-based vitamin C serum it just degrades the, the effectiveness essentially so What's cool about this is it's literally just vitamin C powder that you can mix with anything you want. So you can mix it with like a water-based serum because you're mixing it straight away and applying it. So its effectiveness is still going to be there as opposed to if you were to like pile a bunch of that into this and let it sit in there then it would just go bad over time. So I'm going to take, oh I might do like a pump and a half of this. And then it comes with like a little scoopy scoop as well. I feel like a chemist every morning. And I just do about half a scoop, so quite a small amount, which equals about three parts serum to about one part powder. Woo! Giving it about a 25% concentration. It's not exact, but <laughs> it does the trick. And then I just massage it together and rub that on my face. Particularly aiming for this part because I do have quite a bit of discoloration here around my eyes. So that's where I like to focus it as well as around my chin to help fade some of my like old breakout scars and whatnot but it's so gentle like I don't feel like I ever get any irritation or anything and I just like that it's really customizable and then I'll go in with the moisturizer I've been like just obsessed with for the last month and when I first got this about 10 months ago or so I was just not in love with it it's the Glossier Priming Moisturizer I mean I love the packaging I got this while I was in the UK I actually placed a Glossier order while I was there and this is one of the products and at the time I was like eh, it's okay and it kind of got pushed to the back of my collection but I pulled it out again to kind of use it up recently and I was like I really like it now I don't know what's changed um, I think maybe I wasn't using enough before because it is a very lightweight cream so you can use like a pretty decent amount of it 
um, and I think it kind of needs that, especially because obviously we're about to hit winter here in Melbourne and even though I live in Australia, Melbourne is very cold. This has been so nice, it's so lightweight and it just absorbs and sinks in so beautifully. I mainly though use it in the mornings, I find that at night I still prefer something maybe a little richer like the Clinique overnight moisture surge mask I love that this is so nice for the mornings it's lightweight to get Glossier though in Australia you do have to use a shipping forwarding service because they don't ship here which if I had a few things I wanted to get then I might consider getting another one of these um, I've already got an order actually on its way which I placed before realizing how much I liked this so kind of gutted I didn't put one in but maybe the next time I do it it's not necessarily groundbreaking or life-changing but I'm just really enjoying it it's got such a unique texture it's just like almost whipped but then on top of that I've been going in with my Paula's Choice super light wrinkle wait super light daily wrinkle defense tinted base so this is a little SPF which is definitely my favorite western sunscreen because <laughs> most of the sunscreens I love are Korean or Japanese it is physical so if you've got a sensitivity to chemical screens this is great and even though it's tinted it doesn't show up on the skin like I'm really really fair it doesn't make me look orange or anything it's tinted just enough to cover up the fact that it might leave a bit of a cast being a mineral base so yeah it's perfect I mean look it looks so good all right so I've jumped into some clothes and this sweater that I'm wearing is actually a sweater that we bought together me and Alex I was stealing his blue version of this all the time to wear because it's so warm it's like wool and it's just comfy and I loved it so I was wearing it all the time and he was getting fed up because he wouldn't be able to wear it so he went and bought another one but this one is like a really dark forest green and it's so nice <laughs> so now we just share them so I'm, I'm either wearing this or the blue version pretty much every day in terms of foundation this month I've been getting back into using my L'Oreal true match again these are the Australian bottles and I wear a mixture of 0.5 R which is rose porcelain and 0.5 N which is just normal porcelain I find the Australian version of porcelain just a little bit more yellow than the US one like just a fraction but it's enough that it kind of bothers me so <laughs> that's why I like to mix in a little bit of the rose color which is just way too pink on its own so together they make a really nice shade I've just forgotten my mirror so I'm just gonna have to use this one up here for a bit <laughs> Do I have a mirror in here that I can use for today and I just love this foundation it's such a classic it's like a nice medium coverage it leaves a satin finish and I find it lasts a lot better on my skin than something like the Maybelline Radiant Dream Radiant that I was trying earlier in the year. I did actually retry that again this month a few times. I love the way it looks when it first goes on, but it just doesn't last on my skin at all. Whereas I find this True Match one really does hang around for most of the day. So it is better for me for like an everyday kind of medium coverage sort of foundation. I'm literally going to do my like most basic everyday face just because this is like literally what I wear most days well I'm just gonna put on some concealer as well and the NARS soft matte complete concealer is pretty much set in my everyday makeup drawer for most of the month and I really like it trying to use it up though because I think I, I still prefer the MAC studio finish even though I never show that in videos that belongs in my handbag that's why it never makes it into these videos but I'm trying to use this one up we've had quite a few changes to our like lockdown laws so about two weeks ago or so we were allowed to start having up to five guests at our house. Um, everything else was pretty much the same. That was the only kind of additional rule of like being able to go out. You can go to your friend's house. Um, but they recommended like keeping your bubbles still really small. So, so I've only seen like three of my friends so far. But it's so fun. So we had um, one of my best friends and his partner. Um, they came over for dinner one night. It was like the first sort of social occasion we'd had like in person and it was just amazing. I made the Lone Star Dixie Chicken which I was showing on my Instagram a wee, a wee while back and it was just so fun. Oh my gosh, just so nice to host again. I love hosting dinner. Like I'm not going to be rushing back out to like go into pubs and clubs and all that when that opens because that's not really my scene but oh my gosh, I've missed having dinner parties and then last weekend we also went over to a friend's place and he cooked us steak and it was so nice oh it's just been so cool to see people again I'm just oh, I'm so excited to see everyone I know that some of you are still in a pretty heavy lockdown out there so it must be infuriating to 
listen to someone being like, oh my gosh, I can see my friends, but I've had to put up with all my Kiwi, Kiwi friends eating at cafes and restaurants and just being like, oh. Cafes and restaurants are opening up for seatings on Monday, so it's like three days from now. Uh, well, actually, the day that this video goes live is the day that cafes and restaurants are gonna be like kind of open again, but with like lots of social distancing. Um, but it's pretty exciting. Things are starting to go back kind of to normal and I'm just like mm -hmm. It's gonna be a long time before concerts and stuff are back on but we might be able to do some chamber music stuff in the meanwhile Which is cool. Although my pianist is over in Perth until the end of July So we won't have any Morton Trio stuff for a while, but things are getting back to normal Which is very exciting and then next sad day I'm having all my girls over my little work wives who are my kind of online youtuber creator friends we're all gonna hang out here and we're gonna do high tea. It's gonna be so fun. Um, so I'll probably share quite a bit of that over on my Instagram. I don't think I'll vlog it, but it's gonna be so fun. Oh. I'm just using my Chanel cream bronzer and I just used my number seven powder. That's what's been sitting in my everyday makeup drawer a lot this month. Lily Pebbles just did an IGTV on comparing the original Chanel, the late Tanda Chanel with the new kind of version of it in the, um, in the LeBeige's line. And originally I watched Mel Thompson's comparison video and she was like, I hate it, it's so different, Ugh. like it's gone bad. And I was so gutted because I absolutely love this product. But Lily really didn't find it much different. And honestly, the inclusion of coconut oil, I don't know if it actually will bother me because I was looking up the ingredients of my beloved Aritalm Kush, Sugar Ball Cushion Cheek Colors and they actually have coconut oil in them and I've never once broken out my cheeks from them. I think using like a moisturizer or something with coconut oil that you're really like slathering over your whole face, particularly around this chin area. That's the only part of my face that tends to get quite congested um, with heavy oils. I think that would be a bad move, but I think the tiny amount of product you use each time with this, coupled with the fact that I'd be applying it in areas that don't tend to break out, I think I'm gonna be okay. Which is very exciting because when this runs out in like a year's time, I would love to be able to repurchase it. I'm gonna pop on a little bit of the Mecca Cosmetica Weekend Skin Tint. This is a cream blush that I've been enjoying again, mainly because it's just so quick and easy to apply. It has such a nice radiant dewy finish. On the other side of the blush, there is actually a little cream highlighter. It's not the best color for me. It's a little bit dark, the kind of champagne-y color, um, but it's not so bad. I just put a tiny bit here on my Cupid's bow just to give that a little bit of radiance and maybe like a little bit here on the bridge of my nose but I don't bother using this on my cheeks because they're still pretty dewy from the blush. Brow product is the M Cosmetics, I don't remember what this is called, Brow Fluff or something? <laughs> um, but I talked about it in my recent like makeup play date, so I'll try to remember to link that up in the info card and down below for you if you're interested. Um, this month we also finished Ozark season three the last episode, oh my gosh. Episode nine, I like cried so much. That's a really sad episode. But episode 10 is amazing. And like the final scene, oh my gosh. Me and Alex were like, mouth drop. <laughs> so we finished it up quite early in the month. And then I spent the rest of May, I think I called this my June favorites earlier, didn't I? It's definitely May favorites. And then I spent the rest of May watching The Last Kingdom season four. It's basically if Vikings and Game of Thrones were to have a baby, then you'd get The Last Kingdom. It's really good. Uhtred is a little bit of alright, eh? Hunky Dane. On that note, I wanted to mention as well, I've been wearing my Nordgreen watch with the leather strap so much this month. The reason I'm not wearing it today is I am trying out a new version that I'll talk about in another video coming soon. This particular combination with the leather strap, I've been wearing so much because it's really comfortable, like as, as beautiful as I think the gold straps are. They're a little bit more like sort of dressy, so I tend to only wear them like if I'm filming or soon we'll be going out. <laughs> but for around the home, working, I just think the leather straps are so nice. So I've been wearing that like pretty much every day. Absolutely loving it. I'm just using the L'Oreal Paradise Aesthetic Mascara in brown. This really is basic, guys. I'm not even going to wear any eyeshadow. <laughs> of course, a little bit of lip liner. And then I'm actually going to take that blush that I was using earlier. It is actually like a lip and cheek cream. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of that. Just give them a bit of color. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of the M Cosmetics gloss that I've been trying out lately. 
Before we wrap things up, I do just have two hair products I wanted to talk to you guys about as well. I know this is a really random order, but because I washed my hair yesterday, I couldn't really talk about them today. So the first is a hair mask. It's the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Mifura Oil Intensive Hydration Hair Mask. Again, another recommendation from Jessica Braun. This is the like most rich hair mask I've ever tried in my life. It is very intense. You do have to be very careful if you have quite fine hair like mine to only use it on the lower half of your hair. Like, do not get it near your roots because it's really quite heavy. But it does wash out very cleanly, which I really appreciate. Some really intense masks I just can't use because they don't rinse clean. But this one I find does a really good job of rinsing out, so that's why I can enjoy it, get all the benefits of how intense it is, and then it does rinse away enough so that I don't, I'm not left with like limp kind of oily hair. First of all, smells so nice there's a really beautiful like coconutty scent in that but like look how thick it is like there is an actual thick proper hair mask you guys know i'm very funny about my texture with hair masks i hate anything that's too runny it has to have enough like viscosity is that the right word <laughs> it has to be like thick enough so that when you're putting it on your hair it doesn't just like dribble out i just i hate liquidy conditioners and hair masks so the texture is spot on, the scent is spot on, it's incredibly moisturizing. I do use it more as just a weekly treatment rather than necessarily every time because it is so intense. So I will use something like the Etude House Avocado one in between, which is just a little bit lighter. And on that note, <laughs> my next favorite is actually the hair primer from that same line from Etude House. It's the Almond Hair Primer. Uh, I talked about this recently in my best of like yes style beauty products and it was something I was still kind of trying at the time. I included it because I was impressed with it so far, but like I hadn't really been using it that long. Um, but I really wanted to kind of talk about how to use it because I know that when I first got it, I was very confused by it. I was like, first of all, what's a hair primer? I basically use it as a kind of like, just sort of split end sealant, is <laughs> the best word. So after I've gotten out of the shower and like combed through my hair and stuff, I will take like about maybe a macadamia sized nut amount max like a little goes a long way so don't use too much and it's very thick and like silicone feeling so it comes out and you're a bit like what this is weird but then you rub it between your hands and you just literally just run rub it and really massage it into the ends and I've just been finding that this is making my ends of the ends of my hair look so nice and smooth and it just keeps the condition of my hair looking so nice especially if my hair is air drying which can tend to go extremely fluffy so I'm finding that I guess a combination of this mask and this hair primer has really been helping my my hair to like air dry a lot smoother and like I haven't had a haircut in like six months it's actually looking like the healthiest and shiniest it's ever been looking for like a long time um firstly I think it's because I am air drying my hair a lot more so I'm using a lot less heat on it and I'm also using those really like deep conditioning and protective products so I'm really happy I love those but yeah other than that that pretty much wraps up my favorites a very long favorites a very like vloggy kind of a mix mishmash of different styles but I just kind of wanted to do it that way so I could kind of get through everything and just yeah just have it be as sort of real and authentic as possible I guess but I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you're new and until my next video I hope you guys have a wonderful few days and we'll chat soon bye